I am planning a 10 day vacation in three different states. One is at the beach, one is in the mountains, and one is at a resort town. So what do you pack? <laughs> this is going to be what I am taking with me. And the important stuff is in this. So let me get to this little thing first. This is just extra sketchbooks. So I have an extra pad of paper. This is uh, Fabriano, four by eight inches, 140 pounds. I really like the size of this. And you'll notice that this can go with this pretty easily. They're almost the same size. So I have a couple headbands that I can wrap around it and it's easy to go. Then I have this. This is the Stillman and Burn. It is five and a half by eight and a half. And I like this for sketching because my sketches are not always sketches. I like to add stickers. I like to add ephemera that I found. I like to add little bitty pieces of sketching. So I really like this. There's tape from when I went to anthropology. That's why I like the Stillman Burn. The paper is really white. It's mixed media. It can hold just about anything. And you'll see this is one of those headbands. I get these from the dollar store, by the way. And it fits really great over this and keeps it nice and closed. And in here too, I also have a travel brush set. There is a big, big, little and even littler. <laughs> so this is the big one. This is a number 12. And then I have a number eight, I believe. Yep, a number eight. And then I have even a smaller one. And I barely take this small one. I usually don't use that fine of a brush tip for whenever I am doing sketching outdoors. But I do take this in case we are painting inside just so that I have something for fine lines. And these I normally just keep for whenever I'm at, at a residence so that I can uh, work with this because I use water brushes whenever I'm out in nature and stuff like that. I just find them easier instead of taking water and brushes. So that is what is in my extra bag. Now, if you don't have an extra bag like this, I want to say that buy a plain canvas bag like this. It's just, it's almost the same exact size. And I would just buy something and stick it on there. <laughs> it's that easy. Find a piece of fabric you like, find a book cover, find whatever you like, paint it. You can buy an iron on fabric like a witch stitch that goes on the back of this and you just iron it on and then it looks like this instead of this. And you can find these canvas bags everywhere. I mean the dollar store has them. What I would suggest is you take your sketchbook or know the size of your sketchbook that you really want to take and make sure that it fits in this bag. And then there is this little case. I have been traveling with this case now for three years and I absolutely love it. I wanted something really small. I wanted something that had a handle so that I could just carry it like this if I wanted. It's small enough that I can put my phone in it. And I like that it has pockets. Now there are larger ones and there's wider ones. I wanted something very compact so that I didn't keep packing it full of stuff. I am a minimalist when I travel with my art kit, for sure. I know what I like to use, which is really a pencil, some watercolors, and a water brush, and some paper, <laughs> and I am good to go. But this palette is kind of bigger because I am going to three destinations. So let's take you inside here. You can see that I have um, two pockets here. They've got pencil holders, and they've got these little see-through pockets, which I've, I'm so grateful these are see-through because I always end up losing stuff. This is where I stick my wallet. This is where I stick some cash just so that it's there. And then on the back side, there's one more. There's another section here with a just fully mesh section. And then there's a really big deep pocket here. And what I like is there's a little bit of padding on the back and on the front so that your stuff doesn't get smushed or smashed. And let me share with you what I have. This is my main travel brush. This is the Escoda. So I really like this one. It is a very expensive one though. I can tell you that very expensive. This is a size 12. If you are looking for a 
set of travel brushes. This brand, I think it's the, I can't really pr pronounce it here. Let's see if you can see it. I call it the Fumu all the time. I don't know if that's what it's called or, but I really, really like this brush. It's really held up for the past year of me taking it in and shoving it into things. And you get three of these for a fraction of the cost of my big Escoda. So I'll, I will have all of this linked down in the description box below. So I take this one and I always make sure that it is with me. It just goes in here. I've got a couple water brushes and these are what I really prefer. I only use this as if I'm in the residence or somewhere that it's not outside and I can get a cup of water. Otherwise, I am for sure a water brush girl whenever I'm on location because I don't really care that my stuff looks perfect. I just want to capture the moment is all I'm trying to do. And these water brushes are great. Now this is a water brush that does not have white bristles. It has brown bristles. And I can tell you, my friend Robin introduced me to these and I love them so much better than the white bristles. They're softer. They go, they last a little longer. The white ones for me were not bendable. They didn't um, really like, you weren't able to like really press, press the point and get what I wanted. So when she showed me these natural hair brushes, I was like, yes, please. <laughs> and I like rounds all the time. So this is probably about a six round maybe. And then I have a regular mechanical pencil here. I like a 0.7 lead. I like a heavier lead. I have an eraser stick. This is just one that you click it and the eraser comes out. But I like to always carry an eraser because I like to erase. And then I've got three watercolor, three water soluble pencils here. I have an Estabilo All pencil in black. I have a Karen Dash Musee Aquarell, Aquarell pencil in, I don't think this one says, oh, there it is, sepia 50%. And then I have the Aquarell again. This one is in olive, brown olive 50%. I chose these two colors, green and brown, because I mostly paint nature. And when I am using these, I am treating them, instead of drawing with a pencil, I draw with these because they're water soluble and I will show you that. And the Stabilo here, I use this mostly as a pencil, but I will show you how you can get dark and light lines with this one as well. These are a must for your bag, trust me on this. The thing with the colors too, you get to pick. So if you do a lot of flowers, pick a yellow or a pink. If you do a lot of rocks, you know, pick a lot of uh, natural colors, neutral colors. If you do a lot of urban sketching, think about the color that you, you see the most. Probably a light gray would be great. Maybe even a dark gray. It just depends on what you use. It is a great tip. And then in here I have some Altoid 3D printing palettes. And I'm gonna show you the options of these in a minute. I usually carry a couple because they'll fit in my paint container, you'll see that. And sometimes, like if I'm doing more nature, I want more mixing palettes. If I'm doing more, like say a landscape, I need less. So you just have to decide what you're mixing and how many things you will need, but I'll give you some alternatives to, do, to this too. Because they're plastic, they're not the best for sure. And then back here what I have is I have a little credit card because sometimes I, if I get too much water, I will just kind of smash it around in my sketchbook just to get the water off. And then back here I have paint. I have another big acrylic palette. Now this stays with me in the room. Again, it's whenever I'm in a residence, that's when I'll pull this out. Not, not in the field at all, so I'm gonna set that aside. And then I have a little bitty sketchbook here. This is just Fluid 100 paper. It's cheap and expensive paper because I'm usually not framing these or anything there to capture the moment. And then I will work off of this for a larger painting if I wanna work with this. And I find the four by six size, this is 140 pound, works really great inside of there. And this is a block, so that's another reason why I need the credit card. So you slip the credit card here 
in, can you see that one edge is open? So I'll slip it in there and just cut along the edge where it's glued on two sides here and here. And that way I'm ensured that it stays nice and flat when I'm working on it. And then I have this. These you can find in a bunch of different colors. I have several with Van Gogh. I've got Starry Night, I like this one. I've got several by Monet. And this is why I like these. They're slim, look how skinny. I mean, there's my finger. So you can see how skinny that is. I have a color sheet in here and this is laminated. If you don't have laminating, just put uh, packing tape over the top of it. And then I have another sheet here. This came in with my printer paper and I liked it. See how reflective? So before I had this laminated, I just laid this on top so that nothing would soak into my colors there. And it's just always stayed in there. <laughs> and then I've got all of these paints. There's 40 paints in here. And if you buy the tin, it comes with, I think 50 half pans and then it comes with magnets. So you would take the magnet, put it on the bottom, and then it would stick into here. Now I don't have the magnets on there because the magnets are, you really have to glue them on there better. And I usually don't deal with magnets because they don't go into my little flip palette without taking the magnets off. So I usually just leave magnets off of things. <laughs> That's a personal preference. And these, they stay pretty cut pretty tight in there. A little bit of moving around, but I'm okay with this because this is just for my travel anyways. Now here's what I really like about this is because I am going to three destinations, I want you to see the variety of colors that I have in here. You can see I've got really neutrals. You know I love my neutrals, but I've got several reds, several greens, several browns. I've got some lavenders. I've got some blues in here. I've got some browns up here. I have pretty much a well-rounded palette. No matter where I go, I should be able to paint the scenery that is in front of me. The great thing about this, and remember my little palettes here, is watch this. I can easily take out what I'm not using. Again, this is because the magnets are not there. And these fit really nicely right here. So as I'm painting, I can just go into my paint, go into my palette, go straight into my book. Now, usually when I am painting outdoors, I am not a juggler of things. <laughs> I don't like a lot of things in my hand. So I will have the sketchbook usually open in my hand, depending on the size. This I will usually have sitting on my lap. I like to work with this on my lap and this in my hand. I find it too hard to balance everything. Now I could definitely binder clip this if I wanted, but for me, I prefer to have my lap as a desk. I'm just used to painting that way. And if I can find somewhere that I can sit on a stair, that's even better. And I wanted to show you a couple different things for these two. So if you don't have the little palettes for the Altoid tins, there is a lot of options. This is just a little bowl that I found at the antique store. <laughs> I think it was 50 cents, but look how nice it fits in there. And yes, you're, you're going to get, be able to make some mixes and they might mix together, but I'm okay with that. I usually am mixing my stuff all together anyways, instead of separated. This palette I found online for pretty inexpensive. It was one of the seconds and I liked it because it was small. Now it is a little bigger, so I would have to there you go. So you've got more room for mixing, but look, you're still able to have 15 colors, which is really, really nice. I probably wouldn't take something this big. And then I've got this. This came in a set of four um, off of a lady from Etsy. And I love this size because it's got a bigger mixing well, and then it's got five little small ones and they have little rubber feet on them. And this fits really nice here. So I can go ahead and do this and come up with a little bit more. So those are several things that you can look for 
when you are out and about. I mean, look, check the dollar store. The dollar store should have definitely something like this. Think of a little chip and dip bowl. That's really probably what this is or something for like soy sauce or some kind of, you know, little bitty thing, maybe even an espresso cup, you know, a little cute one that would look really cute. Um, so try something like that. But I like the option of this so that if I know that I'm going to the gardens, what I can do is pull out all of my garden colors. You know, I would pull out definitely the brighter colors for flowers. I would give myself several greens. I would give myself a couple neutrals just to dull them down. If I know I'm going to the beach, I'm going to do more beachy colors and blues. I will probably do a couple grass colors in there. If I know I'm going to a resort town, that's usually brightly colored, especially if it's in Florida. I know that I'm going to be able to find, you know, like um, cool trees and flamingos and all kinds of really nice stuff outside to be that's nice and bright and colorful. And that way I can plan accordingly. That's why I would be taking so many paints at this point. But I'm also glad that I have a little bitty container to contain them in. And it gives me the options with the trays. So what I will probably travel with is these. Like I said, they're not the best, but they're not breakable too. So if I happen to drop this whole thing, it's okay. I'm not busting anything. And I can just pick it up and put it back together and move along. So I hope this has given you some little insight into packing a travel kit that is ready to be changed out, but at the same time takes up a little bitty space instead of something so big. So let me show you what the water soluble things do. The one thing that I really like to use is the Stabilo. Now Stabilo can be used like a pencil. You can just do it really soft. You can draw with it. You can shade with it really dark. You can get values. But the beauty of this is getting it wet. So just with water on my brush, look what happens to it. You can get a nice little graduation of color, water, look how pretty. But look at the richness here of the shaded area. It's so dark. And you can pull it down. Let's give a little water streak for it to go into. Isn't that pretty? And even this thin one, you can come right next to it and just pick the line that you want to shade. Let's take it a little bit that way. And there you go. It's great too because you can come back over. So here it is, hold on a minute, I just got it wet. So here it is dry, I'm gonna use the same pressure. So this is dry. This is into wet and that's dry. So you can see it gave a much deeper line there. Now if I press, look at that. And I can press here and then it will eventually fade away. And I can just come back. Let's try to darken this. Let's try to smooth this out so that it's pretty. You can also take it, hold it up, use your brush to just kind of tip it. So see that I'm just going over the brush here and then that will give you a really nice line too. That's why I love the Stabilo. It's a versatile tool that I absolutely love having in my sketch bag. And now this is the brown olive one. So if I was drawing something, let's just say I'm drawing a flower here. A little garden. <laughs> okay, so I can come back here and I can get it wet and it will lightly fill. See how light of a color that is? Let me go a little heavier here. Okay, there's a heavier one.
You can see what a difference that is. But what I really like about this is when you're using watercolor over it, see how the outline just kind of disappears. Find a green here. You can also go into wet paint with this. So let me draw that here. Let me get a little bit more water. So having a couple of these in the color that you feel you're going to use the most is very nice and very handy because if you are out and you don't have a pencil but yet you still have one of these water soluble things, you can still make beautiful art. So there's the Stabilo. I love the versatility of this. And then here is the Karen Dash Museum Aquarelle. I love the variation of lines being dry and then getting it wet and then working with more pencil in the wet areas. I hope this little kit has inspired you to have a to-go bag. I mean, that's why I've made it so portable. It's just I grab it by the handle and I go. It's winter here in Indiana right now, and I would love nothing better than to have a sunny day. I grab this little bag, drive away in my car, and I'm able to start sketching instantly. To me, that is like the perfect day. If you are inspired by today's travel ideas, please like, comment, or subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching.